Hello and welcome to Pelham School District today. My name is Chip McGee. I'm the superintendent. Um, and in this uh, latest episode, I'm excited to have Don Mead, uh, principal of Pelham High School, and Sarah Mirandos, uh, who's our assistant superintendent. Uh, and we're going to talk about a program at the high school um, that the community may not know everything about. Uh, and there could be some. Um, uh, well, there's a lot going on with this program that uh, the community doesn't know about that's um, exciting to explain. The program's advisory, oops, see we're live at the high school, so real noises happen here. That was the end of a class. That <laughs> is the end of the day. So end, of the day. Of end of the day. End of the day. Yep. And so um, uh, I'll start with Dawn. Uh, if you could just tell me, uh, so advisory through COVID moved around in terms of when it is and how often it is. Could you just tell me where it, where is it in the schedule now and how often does it meet and, and uh, what is it? So advisory has moved back to one of its original placements between our block one and our block two. Okay. Uh, it's mandatory even for our late arrival students. Mm -hmm. So all of our students are here for advisory. Mm -hmm. And it meets every day with Friday being a stay day, mm -hmm. which is where they get to meet with their assigned advisory by mm -hmm. grade mm -hmm. and their teacher. They do check-ins on their grades. Mm -hmm. They, and I know Dr. Mirandos will speak to this, there's an SEL component of curriculum. What's SEL stand for? So that's our socio-emotional learning. Mm -hmm. uh, and throughout the school, we're using the curriculum uh, there's some adjustments based on grading, mm -hmm. and there's a little tweak if you each advisory takes on its own personality. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Monday's about nice. How, how many kids are in each advisory, give or take? So Is about it, no more than fifteen. Yeah, no yeah I was going to say twelve to fifteen. Average. Twelve to fifteen. So, um, as uh, I've seen it both in Pelham and in other places, and just tell me if I have this right that it's really a pl a place for the adult, uh, uh, a teacher or sometimes an administrator, um, to get to know that little group um, uh, in, uh, in more of a non-academic way. Absolutely, and it was one of the uh, hurdles uh, that we faced when we brought advisory back because during COVID it was more optional, a little mm -hmm. more fluid at the beginning of the day, mm -hmm. and our senior buy-in was one of the requests mm -hmm. that they return to their original advisory, ah. so they got to finish senior year with the students they started with, and when possible, the teacher they started with. So that so there's a little bit of evidence of that connection really working. Yeah. yeah, and they remembered who those kids were, they so really they were very aware of who was in their advisory. To, to finish with the with the same kind of little family group that they yeah. started with. Um, and so there's a couple things, uh, Sarah, that are uh, different, new, and exciting this year. Mm -hmm. um, would you just talk to me a little bit about um, how we've uh, adjusted it this year to, um, to try and make a good thing even better? Yeah, so we really had a two-pronged approach, as um, Don mentioned. They're back in their grade level advisories, which is really important in terms of feeling a sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. um, so so a ninth grade, Yep. student is uh, with only other ninth grade students. Correct. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Um, and because of that, we were allowed to differentiate the curriculum. So we actually purchased an evidence-based curriculum called Character Strong. Character Strong. That okay. we modified um, to provide, you know, bits and pieces for each grade level so that students and teachers would have some choices because uh -huh. there's, a lot, there's a lot to offer and we wanted them to personalize it to the group that they had in front of them. So ninth grade uh, advisory experience it has some differences from 10th grade, 11th, and 12th grade. Correct. Yeah. So do you have any uh, examples of uh, lessons or, or uh, things that happened in advisory that came out of this Character Strong program? So yesterday I was actually in an advisory meeting, uh -huh. and uh, two of my freshman advisors were talking about an activity called Four Corners, uh -huh. which I, the freshmen yeah. love. So they get to pick different topics and then move around the room based on their individual decision. Oh, it's so like a like a multiple choice question: A, B, yeah, C, yeah. Like D. Yeah, agree, strongly agree, like yeah. disagree, strongly disagree. So, right. they're, so they're moving, but they're also kind of finding ways to connect with people that they might not know are choosing the same option mm -hmm. that they are. So that was just one that was volunteered yesterday. But there's new numerous different activities that we try to make it so it's not a lot of prep on the teachers but it's a high leverage activity and high interest for those students yeah yeah and so um, uh, I think as a way to help students connect 
um, in a non-academic setting. It's uh, I'm really uh, I'm grateful that we have this here. Um, and my guess is, uh, well, you had said there's some differences. Can you tell me about the differences between grades? Mm -hmm. I think certainly um, the ninth grade and tenth grade have a little more get to know you activities, mm -hmm. whereas eleventh and twelfth, um, the maturity level of some of the activities increases, mm -hmm. uh, and they maybe talk about topics or. Um, ideas that might be more appropriate to those um, levels in school. Got it, got it. And um, <clears throat> you had mentioned uh, before before we started that uh, we have an activity coming up uh, related to Veterans Day, is that what you said? Yeah. Yes, so sometimes we bring it school-wide mm -hmm. and with opportunities like Veterans Day, we have an amazing VFW here in Pelham. Yes, we do. And they work with us. Our students will be creating cards. Uh -huh. Uh, and they'll be distributed to veterans in the area. We're also assisting with the VFW's auxiliary in uh, collecting items for stockings that will be sent overseas during you, the holidays. You know, it's fun for me is because I because I am in all three schools. I was over at the elementary last week, and they had boxes and boxes mm. of stuff for those stockings. Yeah. Um, and so, so really, that means that the whole advisory. Uh, the whole school during advisory time will be working on these cards yeah. for uh, deployed soldiers. Mm -hmm. uh, that's nice. Um, that 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 really takes the idea of community out of just uh, the 12 to 15 kids here, or even Pelham High School, right. but the the broader community. Yeah, that's really nice. So there's one other thing that I've heard about that I think uh, is pretty powerful, Sarah. I'm going to ask you about this. Uh, is it called My Flex Plan? There's a, like a scheduling tool. Mm -hmm. Could you explain that to yes. me and the Yeah, so watching? it's called My Flex Learning, and it's a scheduling software that layers on top of PowerSchool. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it allows teachers to schedule students in on our non-stay day, so Tuesday through Friday, mm -hmm. for academic help, remediation, uh, to make up tests and quizzes. So it really brings those instructional minutes back into advisory. Mm -hmm. um, and we found from talking to our staff that they are scheduling students in and out they're finding it a better way to have students make up some of that work because mm -hmm. a lot of them play sports after school mm -hmm. or go to work um, so they're really trying to maximize that time in advisory and the scheduling software is allowing them to do that so we're in kind of phase one and we're we just started that this just this fall. started it this year but we see some really good capacity mm -hmm. um, and you know led by the administrative team I think that we have got some good opportunities coming up so if a, so if a student from a parent perspective, mm -hmm. um, if their their child is in advisory and also um, missed a math exam and also is just struggling in math, mm -hmm. can use Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in some mm -hmm. fashion through this mm -hmm. scheduling thing and schedule either with their teacher, current math teacher, or maybe with uh, last year's math teacher mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. they've uh, connected with or go with their best friend to their math teacher's class and work on that. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're expanding it. We hope to include yeah. like Math National Honor Society if eventually to be able to take some students to help support them during advisory. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, again, we're, yeah. eventually. We're, yeah. gonna, we're hoping to scale yeah. up right now. We're and and it, we're, it is easy. I was able to do it this week. Uh, I pulled a few students that I needed to meet with. Yeah, I heard you talking about yeah. that this morning. And the nice thing is it pulls them from the roster onto mine, mm -hmm. so I'm responsible. But they also, our kids are pretty tech savvy, they have the app on their phone, so they got an alert that I had done it correctly mm -hmm. and a reminder to meet with me. A little ding to say, mm -hmm. oh, Ms. Mead mm -hmm. said she'd like to check in with you at advisory. Yeah. That, that would make me a little nervous if I got yeah. a little ding from the principal. <laughs> that it's, it just reminds them, but it also, it was a nice way of communicating to the te now the teacher doesn't have them on the roster, so yes. you know that they're not coming that day. You also know where they're supposed to be. Right, as a, as a administrators, I love that piece. We love it yes. because there's very there's much less slipping through the cracks, mm -hmm. um, and much less of getting lost in the hallways because yeah. we know where they are supposed to be and where mm -hmm. they're not supposed to be, and everyone has the same information. Yeah. And the advisor sees <clears throat> that information. So they can check in with you the following week. So when you met with your math teacher, How'd it go? were you able to do that? Because I see in grade book mm -hmm. that you're able to bring your grade up. Yeah. Oh, that's very good. That's very good. So this is part, um, I just want to say this, this uh, part of it. Um, one of the goals for the district set by the school board um, has to do with belonging, 
having students and staff more connected to each other. Um, the way you've said it, which uh, really resonates with me, is that we want to make sure every uh, student here has a trusted adult they can go mm -hmm. to. Absolutely. Um, and uh, this won't work 100%. Advisory isn't perfect, mm -hmm. um, but it certainly is one of the good uh, next steps to make sure that, that the kids, our students, have adults they can go to when uh, mm -hmm. when they need help because that's going to come up for all of us we Absolutely. need someone to yeah. go to Absolutely. well thank you very much thank I you. really appreciate you having you here this is uh, Pelham School District today and uh, this episode filmed uh, on location at Pelham High School uh, was about our advisory program and some improvements we've made to it uh, starting this year thank you <laughs>